It's China's secret lunar landing program versus the U.S.'s semi-secret, semi-commercial Artemis lunar landing program in somebody's race to the moon. It seems like China is racing the calendar for their first lunar landing, and the U.S. Congress wants Artemis to race China for their next one. Outside of that, especially here in the U.S., there's a lot of conflicting messages and actions. We know that industry working for both superpowers are developing and building the rockets and spacecraft to land the next person on the moon, and they're showing some recent progress. But there's a lot more they're not showing or telling us, like their plans and schedules. For the U.S., Artemis 3 is supposed to follow right on the heels of Artemis 2 and land on the moon in mid-2027. Except we only get sporadic sound bites and we haven't seen an updated schedule or status report that could explain where they are. In the last few weeks, we've seen China conduct important tests of their moon rocket and lunar lander, but we're missing specific launch dates and important context about milestones and critical paths. NASA is getting ready for Artemis 2, but there's a lot of hardware and development for Artemis 3 that remains to be completed. And when they finish that hardware, those companies don't usually keep that a secret. Here's the latest look at current events. The U.S. is still saying that Artemis 3 is on schedule to complete a successful lunar landing and safe return less than two years from today. But what does the evidence in public or other clues say about that promise, or which lunar lander will carry the next people to the moon first? I've been on Artemis 3 watch since I started this channel over a year and a half ago, and some of the recent news relates to the U.S. plans to land astronauts on the moon with that mission. China is also planning to land Taikonauts on the moon by the end of this decade, and we saw a big milestone on August 15th with a seven-engine static hot-fire test of a Long March 10 ground test stage. The stage and engines fired for about 30 seconds while sitting on a mobile launch platform at the Launch Complex 301 pad at the Wenchang spacecraft launch site. This follows a previous three-engine test of another stage ground test article over a year ago. Each core of the lunar version of the rocket will have seven engines, so this test was a higher fidelity version of the stage's main propulsion system, moving parts and machinery, and the interfaces between the stage and a full complement of engines. China's Lunar Orbit Rendezvous concept of operations for a landing mission would start with dual launches of the triple core rocket, sending the Lanyu lunar lander to the moon, followed by the Mengzhou crewed lunar transport spacecraft. We are seeing an increase in testing of those three major flight vehicles, the Lunar Lander, the Lunar Transport Spacecraft, and the Super Heavy Lift Booster. China's recent testing milestones in development of their lunar landing rocket and spacecraft highlight another point of view for a possible race with the U.S. to land the next people on the moon. NASA and the U.S. first landed astronauts on the moon in 1969, and the last mission was completed in 1972. But those efforts are essentially from a different universe over a half century ago, and outside the consciousness of most people living today. Funding for a NASA-sponsored lunar lander during this century started in 2020, and the first commercial human landing system was down-selected in 2021. SpaceX has been working on its Starship launch system going back to the last decade, and they are developing a lunar lander version that NASA will use. The lunar lander is mostly funded by SpaceX, with NASA being a minority investor and defining a set of requirements that Starship HLS must meet. So, given recent news, where do things stand today? Unfortunately, none of the space programs or commercial entities are providing periodic status updates. However, we can see recent milestones, evaluate the most recent updates and statements, and look at what still needs to be accomplished at a high level, given the lack of detail. If we look at what China still needs to accomplish, they are getting closer to launching the Long March 10 rocket in a single-stick configuration, the Long March 10A. The most recent notes were that the first launch was planned in the early 2026 timeframe. The first launch of the Triple Core Long March 10 was planned for late 2026. As noted in recent stories on ChinaInSpace.com, the ground infrastructure at Launch Complex 301 needs to be built out, with separate assembly buildings for dual launch of the full-scale rocket and eventually two mobile launch platforms for each.
In the interim, bringing a single set online will enable test launches of the full-scale rocket in the next year to year and a half. In terms of test flights, we can look at what remains in comparison to the Apollo flight test campaign and the more abbreviated Artemis one. A first launch of the lunar-capable Long March 10 would be similar to the Apollo 4 AS-501 mission or the Artemis 1 launch. An in-space uncrewed flight test of the Lanyu lunar lander launched on a Long March 10 rocket would be similar to the Starship uncrewed lunar landing demonstration that is still planned. There would likely be an analog to the Apollo 7 mission for the Mengzhou crewed spacecraft in Earth orbit. NASA has the Artemis II mission planned that will first test Orion in a high Earth orbit with a duration of 24 hours, and then a lunar flyby that would take about a week to complete after that. From what I understand, there is speculation that a lunar orbit and rendezvous, kind of like Apollo 10, might also be attempted before the first lunar landing, where the two lunar spacecraft would rendezvous and dock around the moon. In comparison, NASA leadership continues to say that the Artemis III mission can fly in mid-2027, although without providing much evidence. The official Artemis III mission doesn't start until SLS lifts off with Orion and the four-person crew, so by the time the final countdown for that liftoff starts, Starship HLS will be loitering in the Gateway orbit with the Axiom EMU suits and all the surface cargo ready and waiting. If Artemis III can fly by that time, that still wins the lunar landing race with China that Congress is championing. Here's what needs to happen. First, EGS, Orion, and SLS have to safely and successfully launch and conduct the Artemis II test flight in the first part of next year, 2026. And in parallel with that, Orion and SLS have to finish production of the flight hardware for Artemis III in the next year or so. Axiom Space has to finish development, ground testing, and certification of their spacesuits in that same time frame. And then obviously, SpaceX has to finish a substantial amount of development work for Artemis 3 in 2026. They have to demonstrate orbital flight, including the ability to stay in orbit for several days and then several weeks. In the next year for Artemis, they also have to demonstrate ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer, which is foundational for beyond Earth orbit missions and then finish the NASA Critical Design Review for the HLS variant of the spacecraft. They then have to launch a larger set of ships into Earth orbit to fuel the first HLS for an uncrewed lunar landing mission. If all the programs can finish that by the end of 2026, then that will allow 2027 to open with stacking of the Artemis III SLS, stacking preps for Orion, launching the Starship tankers and HLS, and fueling the HLS in orbit to fly to the moon, and then stay parked in the gateway orbit for up to two months. Stepping back and looking at the different pieces of the lunar landing architectures between the U.S. and China, as of today, the U.S. has a lead or says it has a lead in all four areas. However, that could change in the next two years. China is using existing technologies and building out the infrastructure to fly missions at a steady cadence. In contrast, the U.S. changes its mind every four years or less, and unlike industry, does not prioritize investments in infrastructure or research and development. For the moon rocket, for now, SLS has flown once, three years ago, while Long March 10 is still in development. First flight for that rocket might not be for another 18 months or so, by which time the second SLS is scheduled to have flown again. But SLS production was deliberately set at a low rate. We may see a total of four SLS rockets built by the end of the decade, and maybe only three of them fly. So even though SLS should fly twice before the first launch of Long March 10, a valid question today is which rocket will get to its fourth launch first. The fourth Long March 10 rocket will probably be very similar to the first, but the fourth SLS includes an upper stage upgrade that is still in development and won't be ready to fly until late 2028 at the earliest. NASA's lunar landing plan only requires three rockets, but that leaves them with no margin for error on Artemis 2 II and 3. That general situation is largely the same for the crewed lunar transport spacecraft. Orion has flown a couple of uncrewed test flights, but Mengzhou has also done something similar. 
Artemis 2 is the first crewed flight test of Orion and is meant to demonstrate the spacecraft is ready to support a lunar landing mission. Mengzhou may still be 18 months or two years away from that, but then the question is which spacecraft will take a crew to orbit the moon first? The Artemis 3 Orion might be ready to stack for a flight in two years, but then it may have to wait for the other Artemis 3 pieces. It's not as clear when the Artemis 4 Orion will be ready to fly either. Right now, the White House wants the Orion program to be canceled before that happens. For the lunar landers, SpaceX says Starship will not be the piece that delays Artemis 3 again, but they don't say much else. The SpaceX schedule has Starship ahead of LANU, since that would mean it is in lunar orbit in less than two years. But Starship has quietly missed all of its previous promised dates, so a similar question to the crewed transport applies to the lunar lander. Which lunar lander will fly to the moon first? If an uncrewed LANU were to be manifested on the first Long March 10 launch, it could make it to the moon in 2027. There's a question whether any of these programs in the U.S. or China will hold their schedules, but Starship will need to beat that date with its uncrewed lunar landing demo if Artemis 3 is going to launch by mid-2027, which is less than two years away. For the lunar surface spacesuits, we don't know much about development of the Chinese Wang Yu suit or its milestone schedule. But that's similar to the commercial Axiom spacesuit that the Artemis 3 surface crew will use. A government accounting audit revealed that the two Axiom flight suits for Artemis 3 are supposed to be delivered by the end of 2026. But we're missing all the other context, and previous audits noted that earlier major milestones were over a year late. Looking at who is ahead and whether one side is catching up or falling back, a question for both the U.S. and China, and for the programs and commercial companies, is are they holding these schedules? For the secret programs in the U.S. and China, unlike the public ones, they never announce a delay. NASA has announced multiple Artemis III delays for either SLS or Orion, acknowledging that they were going to miss the previous target dates. But both Axiom Space and Starship have silently missed all of them so far, too. There's also the question of who's racing and the question of what they are racing. The U.S. is divided on everything today, and this is no different. Beating China is the highest priority for Congress, and they are willing to continue funding the long-standing government programs, even though they are slow and more expensive than partial investment in commercial services. The White House sees it the opposite way. The government programs are too expensive and need to be terminated at the beginning of 2028, whether or not they win the race. SpaceX is far and away the industry leader these days, and Starship is their highest priority, but it's not clear what race they are in either. Elon Musk rarely says anything about Artemis. Starship is about going to Mars, and the emphasis is on the race to be ready for upcoming Mars transfer windows, either the next one in late 2026 or the one after that. Everyone is racing the calendar, and so far the calendar continues to win. China has said it wants to land before 2030, or the end of this decade. They can meet that goal regardless of the outcome of the U.S. programs. Right now, the U.S. might still be in the better position to win the race if Axiom, Orion, SLS, and Starship can keep up with their current schedules. But there's a decent amount of uncertainty and doubt about those schedules due to a lack of supporting evidence provided by the programs about how well they are doing. And the U.S. has very little margin for error. They won't have any backup hardware in case of an aborted lunar landing attempt on Artemis 3 until closer to 2029. So if Artemis 3 is delayed until 2028, that opens the door for China to definitively take the lead. But it's also possible that China falls behind their vague schedules in the next few years, just like the U.S. has with theirs. Thanks as always for watching. Click on that like button if you found this video informative. Based on the political rhetoric so far this year, 2027 is turning into a U.S. deadline for an Artemis 3 lunar landing. Subscribe to my channel for more Artemis 3 watch videos and to find out what's going on with Artemis every week. See you next time.